Consider I am working in a food processing factory producing orange juice. Company intending to purchase a new omic heating unit. From the earlier videos, I know basic principle, advantages and major components of the omic heating process. Now it is important for me to understand the operations and functions of each component. What are the important issues I need to know while operating an ohmic heating process? In this video, I am going to explain the important aspects we need to know in operating an ohmic heating process that is components and their functions. Main components of an ohmic heating process are electrodes, electrode caps, ohmic heating tube or chambers and power source. Ohmic heating tubes need to be made of electric non-conducting materials since we don't want current to flow through the tube. Electrodes are the most important components of an ohmic heating process. What is the function of electrodes? Electrodes provide uniform flow of current across the entire cross section of a food matrix. In this diagram, we could see an electrode with its cap. Cap material should be non-conducting to electric current. Five important aspects need to be understood for electrodes. First, electrode dissolution, electrode corrosion, gas liberation due to electrolysis of water, liberation of volatile component, and electrode fouling. Earlier, aluminium, copper, tungsten, titanium, stainless steel, and graphite electrodes were used. At present, titanium platinum electrodes are being used effectively. What is electrode dissolution? When an oxidation voltage or current is applied, the electrode that is anode dissolves and consequently the metal ions are rapidly released near the electrode surface. Galvanic corrosion is caused when two dissimilar metals come into contact with each other while immersed in an electrolyte, like salt water. Electrolysis is caused by the existence of potential current between two different electrodes. Metal dissolution from the electrode due to electrolysis is an issue. Electrode dissolution could affect the quality of the food product by changing its color, nutritional sen and sensory quality and can cause contamination. Any decay or corrosion of electrodes should be studied since it could shorten the lifetime of electrodes and it can contaminate the food. Corrosion or dissolution of electrodes depends on the materials or coating of electrodes, current density, temperature, salinity or ionic strength and viscosity of a product. In the case of stainless steel electrodes, corrosion was most serious at low alternative current frequencies of 5500 and 200 Hz and a high current density of 3500 amps per meter square. At electric frequency values above 5000 Hz, corrosion reduced dramatically even as current density was increased to 3500 amps per meter square and heating time extended to one hour. Corrosion decreased exponentially as a log function of frequency and increased exponentially with the increase of current density. The rate of metal release from the electrodes to the heating medium depends on frequency and applied field strength, ionic strength, pH, composition and electrical conductivity of the heating medium. At present, commercial processing could provide food compatible electrodes. However, alternative current above 100 kHz could be used for negligible metal dissolution. However, the use of ohmic heating at higher frequency than conventional 50 Hz can significantly reduce 
the flux of metal ions from stainless steel electrodes. Early study used electrode dissolution using titanium, stainless steel, platinized titanium, and graphite electrodes. The pH value used 3.5, 5, and 6.5. Current frequency was 60 Hz, and power source was 39.8 kilowatt. Platinized titanium showed relatively inert in relation to electrode corrosion and hydrogen generation at all pH. Earlier electric field frequency was evaluated in the range between 10 to 10 to the power 5 hertz. The use of low electric field frequency 10 hertz led to greater ascorbic acid degradation and higher color changes probably due to occurrence of electrochemical reactions. Above 100 Hz, these reactions were minimized and as a result, ohmic and conventional heating process showed similar degradation rates of ascorbic acid and similar color changes. Attention needs to be paid to the gas bubbles formation by electrolysis of water or other volatiles. These gases could affect the flow of current from the electrodes to the food matrix and can create pressure in the ohmic heating chamber. Noticeable gas liberation was observed at stainless steel electrodes but no visible liberation with the specially coated titanium electrodes. Distance between electrodes can affect the heating process. The use of multiple electrodes gives a much greater degree of control and provides a uniform electric field. Food components could be deposited on the electrode surface and it could affect the current flow and can cause issues of the electrode performance and cleaning. Following is the formation of unwanted materials deposited on the heat transfer surface during heating and cooling processes. Capacity of the power source also needs to be considered. Power input, kilowatt, applied voltage, volt per centimeter, and current density, amps per meter square, are important factors for ohmic heating. Earlier setup in 1930s used two carbon electrodes heavily insulated with glass. A 220 volt alternating current supply with a constant power input of 15 kilowatt was applied to the carbon electrodes. Process temperature and residence time were controlled by varying the flow rate. They used this unit in mild pasteurization. I would like to thank you for watching this video until the end and supporting our channel.